Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Good to see you. Okay. Let's do this. Just let me get everything ready for you, and then we can start. Okay. Now I'm going full screen. Okay, there you go. All right, as usual, um, I'm going to call the attendance first. So when you hear your name, please let me know you're here. Okay, um, Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Is Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos here? Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Present. Thank you. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present. Thank you. Gabriel Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. Present. Thank you. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. No. Okay, just a second. Jose Luis Hernandez Flores. Present. Thank you. Josue Isaías Najarro Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Lilian Estela Portillo Garcia. I'm here teacher. Thank you. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Luis Fernando Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Present teacher. Thank you. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Thank you. Walter René Quintanilla González. Present teacher. Thank you. Jenny Maritza Sánchez Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, just one more time. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Alejandra Cristina Magaña. Carlos Alfredo Ramos. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Present. Thank you. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Okay, let's begin. Um, can you see the screen I'm sharing? Yep. Okay. Let's take a good look. Welcome. Once again, this is Inglés Preavanzado Modulo 2, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. And this is session number 10. Today is January the 31st of 2023. Okay. This is the last day of the month, first month of 2023. Completed. Okay. Let's do this. So, what are we going to do? Well, we still have to talk about and we have to practice passive causatives. And today we're going to start active causatives too. You will see, it's not very difficult. But first, a review. Take a look. The roof of Sandra's house was damaged. This is the same from yesterday because we're reviewing it. So she called the builder. Here's the builder. And yesterday he came and repaired it. So you say, Sandra 
had the roof repaired yesterday. Okay, and what does this mean? This means Sandra arranged for somebody else to repair the roof. She didn't repair it herself. Okay, if you have something done, you arrange for somebody to do it for you. Now let's compare this. If you say Sandra repaired the roof, that means she went onto the roof and repaired it herself. But if you say Sandra had the roof repaired, that means she paid somebody else and that person came to her house and repaired the roof. She didn't repair it. It was a different person. As you can see in the picture, here's Sandra. She's only looking, hmm. supervising, monitoring. And the other guy, you know, the man, the builder is repairing the roof, okay? Example, did you make those curtains yourself? Yes, I like making things. Did you have those curtains made? No, I made them myself. Now, the word order, very important. You have to use have, then the object, and finally the past participle. Now, this is, the, the causative is a form of passive voice, passive causative. Every time you have the passive voice, you have to use the main verb in past participle. Every time. Okay, that's a rule. So, this is the easy part. When you mention the object and the verb in past participle, the difficult part is at the beginning when you have to use the verb have because you need to conjugate it. Okay, sometimes it will go in present simple, some other times in present continuous, some other times in present perfect, some other times in past simple, it can go in past continuous, uh, past perfect, okay? You can use it with models like could, can, will, might, etc. You can use it for the future using will or be going to, and so on. So here's the difficult part. This have, verb is the most difficult part of this because you need to conjugate it depending on the circumstances, okay? Examples, Rachel had the roof repaired. Had is in past simple. Maybe it happened yesterday or last week. Where did you have your hair cut? Again, it's past simple, but this time, question form, okay? That's why you say, where did you have? We are having present continuous, that means, it's happening in this moment. We are having the house painted. Right now, as we speak, somebody is painting our house. I think you should have that code cleaned. You're using it with a model. The model should to give advice. And the last one, I don't like having my picture taken in general, right? You don't like having your picture taken. So very important. We say, how often do you have your car serviced, okay? Again, if you notice, you have the verb have, after that, there's the object, your car, and then the past participle, serviced. This is the correct order. If you do it in a different order, it's not going to work because it is grammatically incorrect, okay? If you say, how often do you have serviced your car? That's not grammatically correct, okay? So you should avoid this structure. Another example, our neighbor is having a garage built. Again, the verb have is having. The object, a garage. The verb in past participle, built. This is the correct form. If you say our neighbor is having built a garage, incorrect, okay? You should never use it like that. And finally, this example, your hair looks nice. Did you have it cut? Okay, here's the verb have. It is the object, and cut is the past participle of the verb cut. It's like cut, the past form cut, and the past participle cut. So you don't say, did you have cut it? That will not make sense. Okay, so be very careful with this. Always the verb have, second the object, and third the main verb in past participle. That's the order. So... Um, yesterday, we completed some exercises, but I have more today. Sorry. So we need to do this. Take a look. Use the words in parentheses to complete the sentences. You have to use the structure have, 
something done. Okay, you have to use the pass, uh, passive causative. So I'm just going to change this just, okay, that looks better. Otherwise it will be confusing. So what do we have here? You have the, you have the subject we, you have the house, which in this case will be the object, and then you have paint. Last week. When we say last week, this indicates past simple. In other words, you have to use the verb have in past simple. That's the key. Who knows the answer to this? Raise your hand. Lilian Estela. I don't know if it's correct, but I would Let's try. try. Let's try. No problem. Okay. We, but we, like you say, that is simple, right? That's simple. Okay. We paint the house, paint the house last week. Aha. Uh -huh. But if you say that, this is not the causative. If you say, we painted the house last week, that means that you did it. Uh -huh. And the passive causative indicates that you paid or you asked a person to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. Okay, the structure goes like this. Always remember, you have to use have plus the object plus the verb in past participle. That's the structure. So that means that if we have to use past simple, the verb have will be in past simple. We can say, but it's very difficult to understand for me. No, don't worry, don't worry. We're here, I'm here to help you, don't worry. Okay, we're going to do it little by little. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first we need a subject, right? And the subject is here. The subject is we. Yes. So we start mm -hmm. by saying we, and then you have mm -hmm. to use this because you know that it was last week, okay? Last week is a completed period of time in the past. So that means you have mm -hmm. to use past simple, okay? Very important. Now, that's say, let's say the indicator for how you have to conjugate the verb have. Have. That's correct. We have what? The, now the object. The house. Correct. Okay, we have the house and then the verb in past participle. Paint. Painted, right? Okay, we have the house painted. There you go. You did it. We had the house paint last week. Mm -hmm. Voila. Now that's mm -hmm. French, not English. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. we had the house painted last week. Good. Okay. Uh, it's what's confusing for me because I, uh, I understand that you use last, last week only with simple past. Um, yeah, but the thing is, you gave me a sentence in simple past. You mm -hmm, did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was active voice and it's not the causative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can say, of course, imagine we, okay, painted the house last week. And grammatically, this sentence is correct. You can say that. The problem is the meaning. The meaning is different. If you say, we painted the house last week, that means we did it, okay? But if you say, we had the house painted last week, that means, I'm going to zoom out, someone did it for us. That's the meaning. Probably you paid the person because nothing is free in this life. So. That's how it goes. So your sentence was good. The only thing is you were not using the passive causative, right? And therefore the meaning mm -hmm. is different. Okay. 
Okay. So um, thank you, Lillian. Number two, I lost my key. Who wants to try? Jenny Sanchez. I lost my key. I will have to make another key. And mm, not really. <laughs> I will have to to have make another key. Mm, okay, I will have to have and then the object. Make uh, another key. Mm -hmm. And another then the main key. verb in past participle. Make. Uh, made, right? Ah, made. made. Uh -huh. It's an irregular verb. I'll have to have another key made. Voy a tener que mandar a hacer otra llave, right? I'll have to have another key made. There you go. Thank you, Lily. Uh, sorry, Jenny. Um, number three, Rosa. When I was the last, the last time. Uh, you had. You had. Uh huh. Uh, your hair cut correct okay when was the last time you had your hair cut that is correct okay very good i hear your baby <laughs> okay so when was the last time you had your hair cut that's right cuando fue la última vez que te cortaron el pelo right when was the last time you had your hair cut great what about number four Volunteer, please. Who wants to try? Gladys Imelda. Let me try. Okay. Um, That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have every day? Do you have mm -hmm. newspaper delivered? Okay. House every day. To your house every day or do you go out and buy one good but let's take a look every day what verb tense do we use when you talk about the things that you do every day is it present simple present continuous present perfect continuous you having a newspaper delivered yeah but present continuous is when the action is happening right now but this oh. is every day that means it's a routine it happens it happened yesterday it happened today it will happen again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and so on so what verb tense do we use when we talk about the things that occur every day i don't remember okay okay um Gladys, I want you to uh, to hold on, okay, because you're going to continue, okay? But right now, uh, I want to ask openly, I want to ask everybody, what verb tense do we use when we talk about everyday activities? Present continuous. Present continuous is for actions happening right now. It's a different one, but thank you for participating. <laughs> Present perfect, teacher. Present perfect, not exactly. We use present perfect for experiences and actions that started in the past and continue up to the present. It's a different Infinitive. one. Present progressive. Present progressive is the same present continuous, but with a different name. Like infinitive. Infinitive is a, is a verb form, not a verb tense. It's a bit different. What is the verb tense that we use when you talk about things that happen every day? Simple present. Simple present. That's right. Thank you, Claudia Yanet. Simple present. Okay. So going back to Gladys. Okay, Gladys, you have your second opportunity here. What you told me is very close, but we have to use the question form of simple present or present simple. That's another way you can call it. So you told me, I'm going to. Oh, it's a question. It's, it's a question. question. It's a question. Aha. Uh -huh. So. So. Do you have? Absolutely. Please continue. A news. 
a newspaper delivered? Do you have a newspaper delivered to your house every day or do you go out and buy one? That is good. Thank you, Gladys Imelda, and everybody, thanks for participating too. Okay, number five. Who wants to give it a try? What's happening in your garden? Jose Luis. What's happening in your garden? Oh, we have a garage built. Okay, <laughs> but there is a little problem. Take a look. What is happening in your garden? When exactly? Oh, we are, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have, we are having? Yes. We're having a garage built. Bingo. We are having a garage built. Correct. You need to conjugate the verb have in present continuous because it's happening right now. Say, what's happening in your garden? Oh, we are having a garage built. Oh, nice. Very good, Jose Luis. Great. Number six. A ver, estoy haciendo que eh, no solamente nos aprendamos la estructura así como de manera acartonada, ¿verdad? Que sí, ajá, luego el object y luego el past participle. No, más bien hay que aprender a ocuparlo en diferentes circunstancias, ¿verdad? And you're doing a good job. Okay. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Number six. Okay, I tried. Um, do you have the watch machine fix? Um, can you repeat that, please? Do you have the washing machine fix? Mm, okay, the, the word order is nice, but the verb tense is not correct. Okay, let's take a look. What does this person say? Not yet. Todavía no. There's someone coming to look at it next week. So what verb tense do we use when we talk about activities that may have happened or may not have happened up to this point? Um, the structure, uh, let's say, given by ever is good. The problem is the verb tense. I don't know, maybe present simple. Present, present simple. Mm -hmm. Present simple is for actions that occur again and again and again, like a routine, which is not the case. I'm going to include a word here, okay, to make it easier. And I need to, okay. Okay, that, that should make it a little bit easier. You have the word yet. What verb tense normally uses the word yet? Now, this one is particularly tricky because it's another verb tense and it's also a question. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Everybody's drawing a blank right now. <laughs> okay, um, what about yet? Normally, what verb tense do we use when you ask a question and you use yet at the end? Simple past. Mm, it's not simple past, but thank you. Um. Present perfect. That's present perfect. Okay, yeah, that is correct. Thank you, Gabriela Stephanie. Okay, so going back, let's see. Um, ever. Now, we know that you have to use 
present perfect. And present perfect is always the verb have and the verb in past participle. But now you have to ask a question. So um, any ideas? Again, as ever said it. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Do you have? Do you have? And do you have the watch? Do you have the machine? Machine fixed yet? That will be present simple. Uh -huh. That will be present simple. I saw someone raising their hand. I believe that was a who was that? Carlos Alfredo, I believe. Was it you, Carlos? Yeah, uh, maybe okay. I believe is have you have you fixed the washing machine yet? If you say maybe. have you have you fixed the washing machine yet, it sounds like they're asking you if you have done it. And uh, we have to use the passive causative to indicate that somebody maybe has done it. Somebody else, not you. Okay, but we're getting closer. We're getting very close. Let's see what Jose Luis has to say about it. I think is, have you had the washing machine fixed yet? Have you had the washing machine fixed yet? Correct. Okay, that's present perfect. Have you had, in question form, the washing machine fixed yet? Okay, very good. Entre todos vamos llegando a la respuesta y en el proceso vamos aprendiendo detallitos. A veces son cosas que decimos, ah, sí es cierto, se me había olvidado. Así ah, eso lo vimos, ¿verdad? pero entre tanta cosa uno se le olvida todo eso. Entonces, eh, muy bien. Thank you, thank you for the effort, um, Ever, eh, Gabriela, José Luis, and also Carlos. Okay, all together we get to the answer. And the other person says, not yet. There is someone coming to look at it next week. And the last one, if you want to wear earrings, you know the earrings, why don't you mm -hmm. who wants to try this one? Is with model? No, not really. Now with a model. Why don't you have your ear pierced? Why don't you have your ears pierced? Yeah, correct. Por qué no te perforas las orejas? Bueno, por qué no te las mandas a perforar más bien? Why don't you have your ears pierced? That's right. If you ever do this, go to the professionals. Okay, they know what they're doing. Okay, just let me get the next exercise ready. Should be ready. Oops, just a moment. The elements have moved. Um, I apologize. This is going to take just a minute. I'm sorry. I know I'm wasting time. I'm not wasting time. I'm just fixing something. I'm doing it myself. Okay. So uh, for the next part, okay, that was a review of the contents from yesterday and practice also. Now, this is important. Ah, yeah, sorry. Animations, just a second. Ah, yes. No animations, okay, great. Okay, take a look. This is new. And it's important. Get something done. This is also the passive causative. Okay, it's the passive causative. And it's virtually the same as have something done, just with a different verb. Now look, you can say get something done instead of have something done. 
Se puede decir get something done en lugar de have something done. And it's the same idea. There's no difference. For example, when are you going to get the roof repaired? That means when are you going to have the roof repaired? It's the same thing. I think you should get your hair cut really short. It's the same as I think you should have your hair cut really short. It's the same. You can use the verb get or you can use the verb have. And the meaning is the same. It doesn't change. But just like have, you will have to conjugate the verb get. Okay. So again, it is affected by the tense. It could be present simple, present perfect, present continuous, past simple, etc., etc. So be careful with that. What are we going to do here? Okay. The exercise is which goes with which. Number one, my hair is getting long. What do you say to that? My hair is getting long. Letter D. Letter? D, I should get it cut. I should get it cut. That is correct. My hair is getting long. I should get it cut. Mm -hmm. Debería. Uh, in Spanish, we say debería cortármelo, right? But in reality, somebody else does it for you. Okay. Except in my case. In my case, I do it. <laughs> Rosa Esmeralda, number two. I really like this picture. Um, um, I'll show, um, you know, man. Okay. Letter B. Letter B. I'll have to get a new one made. Mm, probably not. It's a different one. Let's see what Gabriela Stephanie has to say about it. Letter A, F. Letter F. I'm going to get it framed. That is correct. Okay. That means you're going to get a frame for it, for the picture. Mm -hmm. Lo voy a mandar a marcar. I'm going to get it framed. Thank you. What about number three? The washing machine is broken. Claudia Yanet. You have this one? Letter A. Letter A. I need Just, to get it fixed. I need to get it fixed. Let's see. That is right. It's letter A. I need to get it fixed. Necesito mandar arreglar. Good. Jenny Sanchez, number four. I want to wear earrings. Letter E. I'm going to get my ears pierced. I'm going to get my ears pierced. Letter E. That's right. Good. Okay. Very good. Luis Fernando, number five. Letter C. Letter C. Can you recommend a dentist? I need to get my teeth checked. That is right. Very good. Thank you, Luis Fernando. Okay. So... Something's happening here. I don't understand what. Okay, thank you. Paola Maria Alvarado, number six. I have lost my key. Uh, little B, little mm -hmm. B, I'll have to get a new one made. I'll have to get a new one made. That's right, very good. Okay, great. So again, um, here's the takeaway. You can use have, or you can use get. It's your decision. The meaning is the same. But you have to be very careful, okay? Because this is what happens when you're using the passive causatives. There's also the active causative, which we're going to study soon, okay? And in that case, things change. 
substantially. But right now, remember, if you're using the passive causative, you can use have or you can use get. No problem. Just remember, you need to conjugate have. And if you're using get, you need to conjugate get. Okay. All right. Now, something else that we need to know is this. Get something done. We also use have something done. By the way, I apologize. <laughs> I forgot to. Um, okay. There we go. We also use have something done or get something done with a different meaning. For example, look, Paul and Karen had their bags stolen while they were traveling. That's a little weird. Okay. But this doesn't mean that Paul and Karen arrange for somebody to steal their bags. That wouldn't make sense. Okay, that would be ridiculous. No, when you say they had their bags stolen means their bags were stolen. Okay. With this meaning, we use have something done to say that something happens to somebody or their belongings. Cuando algo le sucede a usted o a sus pertenencias, por lo general algo, algo que usted no había planeado, se puede utilizar esta estructura también. Claro, nadie quiere que le roben las maletas. Pero nadie va a mandar a que se las roben. Así mismo. <ríe> Así que, cuidado ahí. With this meaning, again, we have some something done to say, we use have something done to say that something happens to somebody or their belongings. For example, Gary had his nose broken in a fight. Uh, Nadie se manda a romper la nariz uno, uno mismo. No, verdad. Le rompieron la nariz. So Gary had his nose broken in, a, broken in a fight. Have you ever had your bike stolen? Let me ask you the question. Have you ever had your wallet stolen? Raise your hand if you have. You can say, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. I'm asking here uh, openly. Any, anybody can answer. Have you ever had your wallet stolen? Never? What, what is the meaning of wallet? Uh, cartera, billetera. La, la billetera, uh -huh, that's right. Have you ever had your wallet stolen? Alejandra, have you? No, never. Never, never. okay. Never. Who has? I have had my wallet stolen. It's very sad. But yes, okay, I have had my wallet stolen before. Ooh, many years ago, over 10 years ago. But I got it back. La recuperé. Fue muy extraño, pero sí la recuperé. Okay, I had my, back, my wallet stolen once. Or, I don't know, have you ever had money stolen? ¿Alguna vez le han robado dinero? Have you ever had your money stolen? Not really? Well, uh, in my case, my cell phone. Okay, your cell phone. Okay, so Sandra has had her cell phone stolen. Let's put it here. So do I. You say, so have I. Okay, all right. You say, Sandra and Gladys have had their phones stolen. No es que le dijeron a alguien que le robara sus propios teléfonos. No, nada que ver. Más bien, eso le sucedió. Okay. So Sandra and Gladys have had their phones stolen. That occurs. Now, I'm mentioning this because this is another use of the passive causative. No solo se ocupa para cuando usted le pide a alguien que haga algo por usted. También se puede ocupar cuando algo le sucede a usted o a sus pertenencias. Okay. Your turn. You have to use the words in parentheses to complete the sentences using this, okay? Did I tell you about Paul and Karen? They, their bags, steal. So what do you have?
Mm -hmm. Carlos Alfredo. They have had their, their bags stolen. They have had their bags stolen. Okay, sounds okay. You can also use past simple and just say they had their bags stolen. Either will be fine. Okay, so you say they had their bags stolen. Le robaron las bolsas o las maletas. Okay, so what about number two? Thank you, Carlos. Uh, what about number two? Security at the airport was strict. Mm -hmm. Security at the airport was strict. Carlos Alfredo, once again. We we had searched our bags. We had searched our bags. Mm, word order. That's a problem, right? There's a problem right there. Mm. But we're close, very close. Okay. Uh-huh. Who can help Carlos? We had our bag searched. We had our bag searched. We had our bag or bag searched. Nos revisaron las bolsas. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. What about no. yes? I have a question. Yes. The the, sub, the subject our bags. Uh, That's can the object. Be after after search. Mm -mm. It cannot. Because the structure um, is always, let me show you, have plus the object plus the verb in past participle, always in this order. So you say, we have, well, we have our bags stolen. Okay. It's always like this. We have our bags stolen. We cannot say we have stolen our bags. If you say that we had stolen our bags, um, you are saying something completely different. Then you will be using um, the active voice and you will be using past perfect. And the sentence also will be very, very different in meaning, okay? No sería lo mismo decir esto, por ejemplo. Let's go over here. Si le cambiamos el orden. We had stolen our bags. El significado cambiaría muchísimo. Sería, nos habíamos robado nuestras bolsas. Ustedes mismos se robaron las bolsas. Ok, cambiaría muchísimo. Si cambiamos esos dos elementos de lugar, el significado queda completamente distinto. Ah, ok, got it, mm -hmm. teacher. Uh -huh. I understand. Great. Already. <laughs> Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's, we had our bags stolen. ¿verdad? Nos robaron las bolsas. Bueno, stolen, dije yo, y era searched. I'm sorry. Bueno, pero es la misma idea, es la misma um, estructura, digámoslo así. Number three. I have some good news. Rosa Esmeralda. Hi. I had my salary increased. I had my salary increased. Increased. Yes, I had my salary increased. That means the boss increased my salary. I cannot increase my own salary. <laughs> well, maybe if I am the boss, okay. Anyway, okay. thank you. Very good. What about number four? Joe can't get a visa. Carlos Alfredo. 
He had he had his application refused. He had his application refused. That's right. He had his application refused. He spent his money. Poor Joe. <laughs> That's over a hundred dollars, I believe, when you go to the American embassy and you want to get a visa. How much is it? Do you have any idea? I have never been there. I have never requested it, so I don't know. How much is it when you when you request the, the American visa? Do you know? Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't, yes. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred dollars. I hear somebody. Okay. Say, okay. I don't. You, I don't sure. Okay, you're not sure, but you have heard somebody say this. Wow, that's a lot of money. No, I don't want it. <laughs> that's too much money. Okay, so he had his application refused. Le rechazaron su solicitud, right? Okay, nice. Before we continue, do you have any questions? Because we're about to see something that is new, totally new. Esto que acabamos de ver no está precisamente incluido en el manual, sin embargo, me pareció pertinente mencionarlo porque ocupar have something done o get something done tiene además este significado, ¿verdad? No solamente es cuando uno manda a hacer algo, que le paga a alguien o le pide a alguien que haga algo por uno, sino también cuando algo le pasa a uno o a sus pertenencias. Se puede utilizar. De nuevo, no está contemplado en el manual. Sin embargo, es parte de la estructura, así que por eso lo mencionamos. Y lo vamos a pasar un poquito así rápido porque, pues, es bueno saberlo, pero no nos vamos a detener tanto en ello. So, before we continue, do you have any questions? No questions? Okay. Just a moment. Okay. Well, if you don't have any questions, then I, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to explain. It's very important. Hemos visto los passive causatives. Pero resulta que también existe el active causative. And what is that? You can use get and have to talk about asking other people to do things for you. Okay, we know this. But when you want to show who you ask, you can use the structure. Si usted quiere mencionar quién va a ser determinada acción por usted, entonces va a utilizar la forma activa de los, causa, de los causatives. And this is the structure. You use have plus the person who does the action plus the verb, but this time the verb in base form, not in past participle, okay? And then the object. For example, my hair looked bad, so I had a hairdresser cut it again. Mi pelo se veía mal, así que un peluquero o un estilista o un estilista me lo volvió a cortar. These are the causatives, but this is the active form of the causative. It's not the passive. You don't use past participles. You have to use the verb in base form. Another example. I have my brother fix my car. He's a mechanic. So I have my brother fix my car. Every time my car has a problem, I take it to my brother's garage, you know, or his shop, okay, and he repairs it. So I have my brother fix my car. Now, look, this structure is different from the passive causative. In the passive causative, you need to use have or get, then the object, and then the verb in past participle. But in this case, the structure changes a lot. 
you have to use have and then the person who does that for you that's someone and then the verb in base form and after that you use the object i have my brother fix my car this is a more standard structure third example i need to have someone paint my fence necesito que alguien me pinte, me pinte la cerca okay i need to have someone paint my fence that's active causative. Okay. Now, what is the other verb that you can use? You can use the verb get. But things change a little bit. I'm sorry. Espero no estarlo abrumando con todo esto. Okay. You have to use get plus someone. And after that, you need to use the two infinitive form, not the base form, the two infinitive, and then the object. And what is it? It's the same, except that this time you have to use two before the verb. Example, my hair looked bad, so I got a hairdresser to cut it again. What is the difference? You use to before the verb. I get my brother to fix my car. Every time my car breaks down or needs maintenance, I take it to my brother's garage and he fixes it. Okay? I get my brother to fix my car. And the last one, I need to get someone to paint my fence. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Que le va a poner tú antes del verbo. Cuando ocupe get. Cuando ocupe have, no. This is the active causative. Before we continue, yes. So, in passive causative, uh, get and have they use the same structure uh -huh. but the active causative the difference is the verb in base and to infinity exactly okay. exactly that's that's the difference but the meaning is the same okay any other questions that you might have? It's 8.53, okay. We only have a few minutes. Any other questions? Como les mencionaba ayer, este tema es un poquito largo. <laughs> Lo malo es que en el manual solo aparece una media explicación en un medio cuadrito. Yeah, I have a question. We, yes, Rosa. We go to get mm -hmm. the two question question sí. so do you want an example using a question yes okay let's see okay, okay. this is yes uh, i have a question okay what is what is the meaning or translation the sentence I have I have my brother fix my car in Spanish. In Spanish, this will be something like mi hermano me arregla el carro. Cada vez que se me que se me arruina, él me lo arregla. Okay, mi hermano me arregla el carro. I get my brother to fix my car, or I have my brother fix my car. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Going back to uh, Rosa's question. Okay, uh, she wants an example using a in question form. Okay, this is passive causative, now active causative. That will be have. Plus someone. Plus verb in base form. Plus the object. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, a question in past simple. Did you have
the dentist take. Now let's see. Um, you have the dentist. Sorry, check your teeth. Did you have the dentist check your teeth? You can say that. What if you use get? Should be very similar. But you have to use get plus someone plus to infinitive. Plus the object. That will be. Did you get, sorry, the dentist to check your teeth? Did you get the dentist to check your teeth? You can say that. Those are two examples of a question form. All right. Now, take a look. Now, when you when who you ask is not important, you can use the passive causative that we have studied before. Have or get plus the object and the verb in past participle. My hair looked bad, so I had it cut again. Esto es lo que hemos estado viendo desde ayer. I get my car fixed at my brother's garage. I need to have my face, my, my fence painted. We're having a new house built now. It is expensive to get the AC repaired. And so on. We're going to do one final exercise today to end the class. This combines both structures. Yes, Gladys? Could you share this, this screens on, on the group, please? Oh, yes. However, I am not connected via WhatsApp web, but I can. I'm going to take a screenshot here. What about this one or the previous one? Or both? Both, please. Okay, great. I will. Don't worry. I'm just going to take okay, the... You. You're welcome. I'm going to take a screenshot right now and I'm going to save it. Uh, let's see. Just give me a second. And then I'm going to send it after the class because uh, I don't, my WhatsApp web uh, client is not open. So where is paint when I need it? Where's paint? <laughs> need to look for it. Just a moment here. Okay. First, and then the second one. Sorry. Just a second. And here's the other one. Okay, uh, by the end of the class, I'm going to send it uh, via WhatsApp. Okay, so um, we're going to do this exercise, last exercise before we finish the class. Complete B so that it has a similar meaning to A. All sentences here on the left are A sentences. All sent, oops. Marsh. Animation. I'm sorry. This should not happen. This should be nine. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well, I gave you the first one, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, complete B so that it has a similar meaning to A. So, what is that? I ask my brother to fix things. Le pido a mi hermano que arregle cosas. So, you can say, I get my brother to fix things. That's active causative. What about number two? We will ask my sister to choose the colors. Our 
get uh, well with my sister. Uh huh. Face. To choose the colors. Okay. We will get my sister to choose the colors. It's possible. Absolutely. You can use it. Um, Rosa Esmeralda, what about the same sentence but using have? Um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, uh -huh. We'll have. He had my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister. Choose my the colors, sister. right? Mm -hmm. We'll have my sister choose the colors, right? Also, as Carlos said, we'll get my sister to choose the colors is also okay. But using the verb get uh, changes, you know, the verb form. Okay, thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Carlos. What about number three? This time I want you to use the verb get specifically. Someone in a salon cuts my hair. How about this one? Gladys Imelda. I get my hair mm -hmm. to cut at a good salon. But this is a passive causative, not active. Because you are not mentioning the person. If you if you don't mention the person, it's passive causative. So I get my hair. Cut at a good salon. I get my hair cut at a good salon. Good. And the last one. Thank you. I had to pay someone to repair the damage. This time you have to use the verb have. Who can help me? Last exercise, we finished then. Mm -hmm. Sandra. We'll ha I had to have the damage repaired. Okay, that is correct. I had to have the damage repaired. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's the end of it. We're going to stop here because it's 9-4. But before that, let me call the attendance one more time and then we'll be done. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Present. Thank you. Carlos Alfredo Ramos. Sí, ya por aquí anda, ya lo vimos. Ok, Muy Olivia. <laughs> yes, thank you. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Olivia Osorio, are you here? Apparently not. Ok. Ok, everybody, thank you. I'm going to send you the screenshots via WhatsApp as uh, Gladys requested. Okay, so thank you. you're welcome. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience, your participation, and the effort. I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.